He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues, so just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity, these things aren't political. They're biblical. God's Word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, hey, everybody. Good Sunday morning to you. Glad to be with you on on this Sunday, bringing the Word of God into your life. I take this as a great honor to be with you. Uh, my name is Tim Thompson. I'm the senior pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. And with me, as always, is Jake Porter. Jake is the assistant pastor over at 412 Church Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, always a blessing to be with you. Yeah, it's always great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to go through our message today. We're going to talk about what it is that God has reminded us to be. We we are in Second Peter chapter 3, for those that are following along in their Bibles, and we're doing a verse-by-verse, chapter-by-chapter study through the book of Second Peter, and now we're in chapter 3, which means we're coming to the end, because this only has three chapters, yep. and uh, we've been moving right along, and like I said today, the, the title of the message that we gave is Reminded to Be What? And we... We do, like I said, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, the points I teach to the adults, you're teaching the same points to the youth. We want people to be biblically literate and know, you know, know how to read God's word, how to rightly divide it, rightly apply it to their lives, because we're living in a culture that's become biblically illiterate. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for younger people, they get reminders of all sorts, reminders from the world, reminders from our culture of what the world wants them to be. And we want to, you know, in scripture, what we're going to look at today is reminders to to be what, as uh, as we go through that series called diligence, you right. know, diligent, what what should we diligently be doing? You know, right. And what are those reminders? And, and as believers, we need to understand, you know, what is what is the, the word of God reminding us of here? Right. So we we both preached a message on this. We got a quick clip we're going to listen to, and then we'll come back. We'll talk more about what it is that we need to be reminded of. So take a listen to this. I want to talk to you about what it is that Peter wants to stir up in us. Whoever reads this letter that he wrote, he, his, he had an intent of stirring up the believer. And he does this by way of reminding. You may remember if you were here at the very beginning, uh, the first couple of weeks, I think it was the second week, maybe the third week, but uh, as we got into the first chapter of this letter, he says, I want to remind you. Uh, there's this repetition. When we talked about repetition, how repetition is key as we study God's Word to go over it and over it. And here in verse 1 of chapter 3, he says, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. So he opens this letter, and now he's kind of beginning to close this letter, with this understanding that he wants to remind us of these things. Of course, in chapter 1, he wanted to remind us of the basic elements of Christianity, those things that I remind you of every Sunday. For those of you that, that are new today, if you come back next week, you'll hear me say almost the same exact thing that I said earlier, that, that Jesus is the only one who's met that perfect standard. He lived a life of perfection. He is God. He suffered a death on a cross. His body is placed in the grave. I say that every Sunday. That is the gospel message that, that we need to be saved. We are not perfect. We need a Savior. His name is Jesus. He's the only one who's been perfect. This is the basic elements of our faith. And Peter wanted to remind people of this very repetitively, that we would know why we believe what we believe. We would know where we're going after life here on earth. We would know how we're getting there. So that was at the beginning of this. Now as he's doing this in chapter 3, he's saying, I, I want to stir something up in you. So not only do I want to remind you and bring that repetitive thing over and over again to the basic elements, but I want to remind you and stir something up in you. And what is it that he wants to stir up? Well, he wants to remind us and stir up that you and I would be something. So that's what we're going to try to answer. What is it that he wants? To, what's he trying to remind us to be? So, yeah, what's he trying to remind us to be? And I would say the first thing here, we see it in, in verse 2, is that he wants us to be mindful of prophecy. Prophecy being, you know, there, you know there's a couple of different ways of looking at prophecy. To prophesy means to speak truth. Um, but it also means to to speak in advance of certain um, events that'll take place. Now, it is done as far as prophecy. Prophecy is finished as far as 
God giving us new prophecy. So there's no, there's nothing we're waiting for. Like, oh, hey, you know, I've got, I've got this new thing that's going to be happening. God told me about it. Like, no, everything that that we needed to be foretold about the coming of Messiah, the rise of Antichrist, uh, the millennial kingdom that's coming up, all of that's already been given to us. And not only has it been given to us, but God wants us to be mindful of it. He wants us to be very well aware that these things are happening in our very presence. It says in verse 2, that you would be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. So so he's talking about the prophets. You have Old Testament prophets. You have New Testament prophets. Of course, Peter is one of those New Testament prophets. John is one of them. Jesus himself is the prophet of all prophets. Um, but here, you know, we we're reminded to be mindful of the words which they spoke. And we're living in a culture right now where people are not mindful of these things. In fact, in many ways, people are very ignorant of them. I say that not in a demeaning way, but just the fact they're, they're ignorant of them in the sense that they don't know about it. And why don't they know about it? Because nobody's talking about it. And that's one of the things I love about you, Pastor Jake, is that as you minister to the junior hires and high schoolers, you're talking about these things with them because it's very clear that that it's affecting this generation, this next generation that's coming up. Yeah, absolutely. Something that we always talk about is, you know, the how people sometimes say, oh, you know, I wish I lived back in Bible times. You know, I wish, yeah. you know, I, I wish, you know, we lived in, in this period or that period. Well, here's the thing is we're living in Bible times. Right, no doubt. The, what the Word of God talks about, especially as we re- approach the rapture, especially as we re- approach all these end time events, when it comes to these last days, well, guess what? We're living in the last days. We're living yeah. in this, the, one of the the most awesome times time periods, I think, in Scripture where where we are looking forward to the rapture of the church. I'm looking forward to to that happening, and, right. and that's an exciting thing. And a lot of times people think about, you know, all these these words that were spoken of before. Oh, you know, they're they're confusing or, you know, they, they don't need to pay attention to them anymore or whatever. But that's it's very false. You know, it's there's things happening in our culture right now that God's word has a whole lot to say about, and much of it is is prophetic. And we've got to to be mindful of it. We need to pay attention to it. And and if we pay attention, then we can look out into our culture and really understand what's happening. Right. You know, there's there's a weird dichotomy God has placed us in as believers because we're we're to live two ways simultaneously, and that's the dichotomy. We we live in one sense as though Christ is coming back right now. Right in, in this moment, he could come back right now, and it's that's called the doctrine of imminency. So, it, you know, believing that his return is imminent, it could happen right now. What that does is it instills in us a sense of urgency, a sense of urgency for for personal holiness, a uh, sense of urgency to share our faith with people who don't know Jesus, because he could come back in any moment. We got to be ready. So there's that sense of urgency that that instills. But then at the same time, we are to live simultaneously as though he'll never come back in our lifetime. And what that means for us is we don't sell all our our stuff and go out into the hills and just stand there and, okay, he's going to be here any second now. Right. You know, that would be foolish. What we need to do is we need to, to raise up godly kids. You're raising up your son right now, and we're watching him grow, and, and you raise him up in the ways of the Lord. So that way when he gets older, he will not depart. And, you know, you train up godly kids, godly grandkids, in my case, and train up godly grandkids. You know, you prepare for retirement, you pay off your house, you do these things that, that the rest of the world does because, you know, he might not come back in our lifetime. So you live both ways simultaneously and you can't live in that dichotomy without being aware of prophecy. Yeah. We have to be mindful of it. We have to be be aware that, that he is going to be coming back. Here's another thing is we need not only be mindful of prophecy, but beware of scoffers. And it says here in verse 3, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So I, I think about certain things in God's word, when I hear certain things, like when I hear Jesus say, verily, verily, I say unto you, you know, or if Jesus says this, I say, and again, I will say, I'm like, okay, I got to pay attention to right. this. And this is one of those places in scripture for me right here in verse three, it says, knowing this first. And what that tells me is I can't move on 
from this point. I can't just read past this and, and continue on without pausing for a moment and going, okay, before I do anything else, I have to get this. Yep. You know, and, and what is it that I have to get before I move on is that there are going to be scoffers that come. And what's a scoffer? It's this person who who talks flippantly about the return of Jesus. Oh, you know, Jesus is going to return. Oh, people have been saying that for years. And I don't know. I mean, if you have experienced that with the younger generation, have, have anybody said that to you? Yeah, I mean, I've heard that before that, you know, like, oh, you still don't believe that, do you? And, you know... It, it, that kind of that same thing that all yeah. oh, people have been saying that for a long time, you know, yeah. and it, it's true. It's been said that for a long time. Yeah, there, that's without a doubt. But do I still believe it? Yeah, 100 percent. You know, God's right. word has proven itself to be true for thousands of years. Why would I still? at this point think okay you know that's that's it the rest of it's not going to be true yeah i still 100 110 percent believe yeah in that you know and and people are going to scoff at those things you know and and as we see that still happening even today okay it says that they're going to come in the last days so then that just kind of reaffirms that are we living in those last days you know i believe so yeah um i believe so as well and and the thing is i've i've actually had scoffers come to me I had at one point I had this pastor come to me and go, you know what, Tim, you need to stop talking about this prophecy stuff. You got to stop talking. You're scaring people. And, and I, the way I look at it is, look, if this scares you, you don't know it because it doesn't scare me one bit. It gets me excited. It l- lets right. me know my faith is real to see these things happening. But he said, you got to stop. You know, Chuck Smith used to say these things and now he's dead and he looks like a fool because he would tell people that he believed that. Jesus was coming back in his lifetime. Now, I I consider this, you know, Chuck Smith was this guy who God used to start Calvary Chapel and the whole Calvary Chapel movement. And, you know, that we see right now 1,800 churches worldwide, of churches that are Calvary Chapel style, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. And um, I, I think, like, what do you mean he's now he's like a fool? How is he a fool? God has used his ministry to draw so many, myself included, draw people like me to know the truth, to want to seek out the truth and know the word of God, be biblically literate, rightly divide the word of God. I don't think that's foolish at all. I think I think it's that doctrine of imminency that he could come back at any moment. It stirs that need and that desire for personal holiness, and it causes people to want to do good things for the Lord, knowing that he could come back at any moment. Um, we got to be aware. Before we move on, before we do anything else, before we, we move on with, with studying prophecy, we got to know there's going to be people who come against it. There are more things we need to be aware of, the more things we need to be stirred up in. We're going to talk about that after a quick break from our sponsor. We'll be right back after this. We are in a free speech war. With big tech, Biden is going after independent news that doesn't lockstep with them on COVID, shots, adverse effects, and early treatments. If you value Valley News' award-winning, unbiased journalism and community coverage without a left slant, please support us by going to myvalleynews.com forward slash subscribe and sign up for $5 a month. We can do this. Welcome back to Our Watch. I'm Tim Thompson. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. We're both pastors at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. And we we began the first half, we're talking about being reminded, being stirred up. And we said we need to be mindful of prophecy. We also have to beware of scoffers. These guys that would come and go, oh, you know, talking about Jesus coming back. People have been saying that for years. It hasn't happened. Well, someday... It's going to happen. Yep. And those people that scoffed at that idea are going to regret that they scoffed at that idea. Here's another thing we need to be um, be reminded of what we need to be. We need to be mindful of prophecy. We need to be aware of scoffers. And we need to be mindful of history. So not only do we have to be mindful of these things that are coming up, but we have to be mindful of things that have already happened happened. It says in verse five, for this, they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. What is this telling us? This is telling us, don't forget that God has always made good on his word. Yep. When God said he would flood the earth, guess what? He flooded the earth. Yep. Um, it, it's it's even cool you know, to see that, oh, it's cool, it's, it's sad to see there's false religions in this, wor- in this world, but they always 
have a flood story. If you notice these major world religions, they have a flood story because we know the world was flooded. It, it's historically, archaeologically proven that that, that happened. And, it, you know, Edmund Burke said this. He says, those who don't study or know history are doomed to repeat it. These people, you know, you think about the flood. When, when Noah's building it, people scoffed at it, just like they're scoffing at the return of Jesus. But a day came where the rains started and the door to the ark was shut. People need to study that. Yeah. They need to remember, hey, you know what? There's going to come a point in time when Jesus does come back and that door of opportunity is going to be over. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I and we see that repeated all throughout scripture where where God's given a a city, a person or something, a warning, right? You 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 need to repent or else this is what's going to happen. And when that repentance didn't happen, well, what happened? His promise was that they were going to be destroyed and they were destroyed, you know, and that happened to, to different people and cities and things all throughout scripture. You can go to, uh, you can go to Israel today and see cities that have been there where there was a promise of destruction if they didn't repent and they're destroyed. You go there and they're gone, nothing left. Uh, and, and we've seen that throughout scripture. Well, the same thing goes for us is there's a, a, an opportunity for us to turn away from our sins, for us to repent. And if we don't, like you're talking about that, that opportunity is going to end at some point, right? God's given us an opportunity. He's being patient and his patience is going to stop and, and it's going to end at some point. Right. And, and we need to be mindful of that. We need to be mindful that God's proven himself of that same principle all throughout scripture. And that's going to happen again, even for us. Right. Um, I want to talk about his patience because that's another thing we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be grateful for God's patience. And it says in verse eight, it says, but beloved, do not forget this one thing. So we're not supposed to move forward without knowing something first. And that was that scoffers are going to come. And here we're told, don't forget this one thing. And here's what it is. And, and I, I have a reason I'm trying to stress this, that there's one thing we're not supposed to forget. It says that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some, con, uh, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I look at the patience of God and my mind is blown. I don't know how he's so patient. If I was God, there would be thunderbolts of lightning striking people dead. Yeah. Um, I, my patience would have ran out long ago. However, I'm so grateful that he is patient because if he wasn't, I wouldn't have time to have given my life to the Lord. Right. So yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad he's patient. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of us can identify with that. Yeah. You know, where imagine if his patience ran out before we made that decision. Right. That that would have really sucked yeah you know right. that, I, yeah. that wouldn't have been good at all right you know i'm grateful for his patience as well yeah you know and there is an end to god's patience yeah and i i can tell people as you study history i i know when when god's patience is done because i've studied history i've studied the bible um when adult sexual perversion affects children yeah and what's happening in our culture what's happening right now that's creeping in all over the place. Right. That's yeah. all over the place, and in schools, and uh, just out blatantly in in public places all over the place, in libraries. Right. Yeah. When when adult sexual perversion affects the kids, God's done. Historically, yeah. biblically, as you as you read the rise and fall of the great empires of man, the fall of these great empires always included adult sexual perversion affecting kids. That's when God's done. But one thing I want to make sure we focus on, because the Word of God focuses on it, it says, don't forget this one thing. So as we study prophecy, as we consider history and what is coming up and what God told us to be paying attention to, as we, as we wrap our mind around all of this, there's one thing thing that we're supposed to make sure that we don't forget. And that is that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. I've heard so many people quote that and never actually give the context to it. What What is it that, that we're supposed to be paying attention to on that? Because what God's telling us is, I'm giving you a clue here. Make sure you consider this, that, that it's, you know, that it's a, one year is as a thousand days, a thousand days, one year. So 
here, here's the point that we're making. We, we understand God is a God of order. Um, God wants to be known. We, we look at what he says at the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and we know that that whole story in Genesis 1 and 2, it's talking about the, the creation of all that we know, all that we, we experience in the physical realm. And it took God six days to do his work of creation. On the seventh day, God rested. And what he did in that, you know, we ask, we could ask the question, why not five days and two days of rest? No, he did this very specifically. Six days, seventh day, he rested. For us, for you and me as human beings, God has given us six days to work, seventh day we rest. That's called the Shabbat or Sabbath. That's that Sabbath day of rest. You look at the land, the earth, as you till the ground, plant crops, you work the land for six years. On the seventh year, you let the land rest. That's the Shemitah year. So you have Shabbat for people. You have Shemitah for the land. This is very deliberate, and God wants us to know that that there's a pattern to him. He wants to be understood. You look at the amount of history we have, biblical history. I don't know about you. Sometimes I read the scriptures and I hear this person begat this person and this person begat that person and this person begat that person. Yeah. And there you can go chapters sometimes where it's this whole lineage. And you're like, oh, why do I have to read through this whole lineage? And it can be overwhelming sometimes and boring. I'll be honest, boring and tedious sometimes as a student of God's word. OK, this person, that person, that person. But the the point that, that I want to bring out in that is. God's records of the lineage of the, the Jewish people, of his people, from all the way from, from Adam through today, they have kept very meticulous records. So what we know from that is we have 6,000 years, roughly, of recorded history here on earth. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for Messiah to return to set up the millennial kingdom, a final 1,000-year period. So you have 6,000 years so far, and there will be a final thousand years, the seven thousandth year, where the the whole world is going to know God's peace here on earth, where Jesus will rule and reign and people will do what he says. There will be peace on earth for a thousand years. Yeah. So th- that is to be set up so that we will know him um, very, very quickly because we don't have much time left. From the time that Jesus came on the scene, which was roughly 2000 years ago, from that time, we know that uh, we're, we're in this time called the church age, mm-hmm. the age of grace, it, 2,000 years, right? Well, in, uh, in Hosea chapter 6, it says, After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up. After two days, well, if as to the Lord, a day is as 1,000 years, and 1,000 years is one day. This is after two days. So in other words, after 2,000 years, he's going to revive us. And what what this is talking about is the Jewish people. So God's going to turn his attention back on the Jewish people. What have we seen starting from 1897, the Zionist movement that began, 1917, the Balfour Declaration, bringing Jews all over the world back to Israel, 1948, this, this you know, we, we just celebrated 75 years since 1948, 75 years of God making good on his promise. All of this shows us God is getting ready to turn his attention back on the Jewish people. But that means that church age needs to be finished. And how long is the church age? Two days yep. or 2,000 years. So I'm telling you, it, it wouldn't surprise me if we got raptured before we finished this radio program. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be cool. <laughs> and we got we got about 50 seconds left for that to happen. Um, <laughs> so we'll see what God does. And I wouldn't I wouldn't cry over it. Um, yep. I, I'd actually be quite pleased with that. But the, the whole point that, that we see in this is we... We're reminded to study history be, and reminded to be aware of prophecy. God has always made good on what he said he would, and he will make good on everything he says he will. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Pay, we got to be paying attention. Right. What's going on around us? Right. God wants us to be awake. Awake, not woke. Yes, precisely. Yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> well, Pastor Jake, that is all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's always yeah. a blessing to be here. Likewise, yeah. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in on on the radio, and also if you're tuning in online as well. We, we're just so grateful for you. We love you. We'll see you next week right here on Our Watch with Tim Thompson. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you are encouraged to engage the culture around you. We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on rwatch.com. 
That's OURwatch.com. Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, and to take back the public square.